Hi everyone, my name is Titfon Carret and I'm presenting here joint work with Johan Danello and Simon Perdri about the quantum algorithm in uh, scalable ZX calculus. So the main point of this work is that we, on the last year, we developed uh, scalable notation from ZX calculus and the goal was to be able to represent, for example, uh, an algorithm uh, with a single diagrams to represent a uniform family of diagrams to say well, what diagrams do we have for each size n of inputs? So we developed this formalism, but in fact, we never really tried it on uh, the usual quantum algorithm you find in any 101 uh, quantum computing class. So this is what we tried to do in this paper. And so I, I will present here three algorithms. Uh, first, uh, Sim uh, we present Bernstein Vajirani algorithm, Dodge's algorithm, and at the end, Simon algorithm. So let's go first, I will introduce some notation you might not be used to. So first we have this floating scalar, this black star, that just will be the scalar one over square root of two. Uh, of course I could have used the X calculus to represent the scalars, but I thought it would be uh, cleaner and simpler just to have always just floating black stars around. So that's it for the scalars. And I will also work in the extension of the X calculus to density matrices and super operators, okay? So in particular, I will use this ground here. This ground is just a trace, okay? It's tracing out, discard map. And if you take the transpose of this, you have the normalized mixed states, uniformly mixed states, completely mixed states. And if you add some stars, you can normalize it. And this is what I've done here. You have the completely mixed states. I will also use those function arrows. So this is even more unusual. So first, you can note that the wire here are big wires, okay? So you have thin wire representing one qubit, and you have the big wires that are representing a register of qubits. So this is a big wire applied on n qubits. And this function f is, is in fact a function mapping a vector of the computational basis to a vector of the computational basis. This is a multi-output Boolean function. So here we are in uh, extension to density matrices. So this is a super operator, but in fact, this is a pure map. So you can only see it, you can see it as just a map acting on the Hilbert space on just a, be a matrix. And uh, it acts as follow. If you have a vector of the computational basis X, then it outputs just a, a vector uh, uh, get F of X. Okay, so you just apply the function on the basis vector. So if those, uh, function arrow is function f of more properties. For example, if they are uh, linear, f2 linear, where f2 is a field with two elements, uh, then we will denote it differently. We will denote it by a red arrow. Why? Because those functions have a lot of interesting property and interesting interaction with respect to the usual generator of uh, the X calculus. So we want to have a way to, um, to show this difference. So then you can, we will use a red arrow to represent this. And in this situation, F can also be represented by a matrix, a zero one matrix with coefficient in F2. And this is this A here. So if F is linear, then we will use, instead of the black function arrow, we'll use this uh, red matrix arrow. And you might have a, see that in the definition of the function arrow f, I put some scalar, some normalization factor, this two to the power m minus n over four. And in fact, this is because I use the uh, well tempered normalization of the X calculus. So in particular, uh, we'll, I will not have any scalar in the copy rules or be algebra rule. And this has another interesting consequence that if I do this construction here, so uh, basically this is a, a C knot, a scaled C knot, when on the middle wire, I just put the function arrow, then this is a well-known quantum oracles corresponding to the function F, okay? So you see it maps uh, ket X times ket Y, it maps it to ket X times F of X uh, plus Y, where the plus here, is uh, XOR, okay, so the addition in F2. So with this point of view, you see that the C naught is in fact just oracle for the identity. Okay, so enough with the notation, let's go to our first quantum algorithm, which is bernstein vajirani algorithm. So here, the input is a function, a binary function, 
And we know that is of the following form. So there is a vector S such that computing F of X is just doing the scalar product of X with S, okay? And the problem is to find S. And in fact, using the following quantum circuits, the following quantum circuits, if we run it, it will directly output the basis vector X. So we will see why. So first, let me speak a little bit about the translation of the circuits in the X calculus. So you see cat one will just be the red dot with a pi on it. The cat zero will be also just an empty red dot. And then since I use the well-tempered normalization, I need to add some scalar, so some uh, black stars to uh, be sure to have the reason normalize cat zero and cat one. So this explains the stars. And you see the Hadama gate, just the yellow box. And you see here that you have a thin Hadama gate, so usual Hadama box in the Hadama gate in the one qubit. But you also have the scale version, the bold version acting on big wire. So this is in fact a Hadama gate acting on um, a tensor of n Hadama gates. Okay, so this is, um, from scalable notation. And for the oracle UF here, you see, I just replaced it by the diagrams I shown on the previous on the previous slide. Okay, and then we have the discard the ground map. So we we'll just discard the qubit here. So I think this is quite clear. So now what we will do is to find uh, a graphical expression to the property of f. Okay, of the property of f. So we see f here is of the form s scalar x. So it is linear. In fact, it's F2 linear. So we will, be, we will be able to use a red arrow. And furthermore, the matrix, we know it, it is just the transpose of the vector S. So we will be able to reply, replace F by this in the diagrams. So now let's compute. So we have this diagram. So we see here, we replaced just F by the red arrow. And now we compute. So first I just use the Hadama gate to change the color. So the red dot becomes green. Okay, this is the first step. And I fuse the, the floating scalars. And then I will use the, I will fuse the two green dots. They will disappear. And I will copy the green pie. Okay, so here with the well-tempered normalization, there is no additional scalar. So we just do the copy. And now I want to erase with the ground. I want to erase the green pie. But to do this, I need to be unsure that it is well normalized. So I would just lose one star to do this. So I can erase the green pie. And I end up with this. In this situation, this is a rule of uh, scalable uh, notation of scalable ZX calculus. When I have a red arrow, I can make it commute with the Adamard gate. But to do this, I need to reverse the direction of the arrow and take the transpose of the matrix. So we end up with this red arrow with S. And here I did something more that I directly use uh, Hadama gates to change the color of the green pie into a uh, red pie. Okay, so we are like this. And this is another rule of uh, scalable ZX calculus. In fact, it's just directly applying the semantics that uh, here you see S is a matrix and you, it's a vectrix of size one time N and you just apply it on the vector one so you end up directly with the vector s and this is what was expected okay so that's it for bernstein vergy when you see directly outputs the vector s so now let's move on to the second algorithm which is the shoulder so now the idea is that you have a function okay from a 0 1 to the power of n to 0 1 to the power of n so here it is a slight generalization of the Josa. Usually it's just a binary function. Here we, all, uh, we allow it to have a, a vector as an output. So it's so just a slight generalization that in our formalism, this is for free. This is why we, we chose to present it. And we are unsure that this function is either constant, so always the same value, or balanced. So what is the meaning of balanced? It means that if you take any output of your function and you look at the set of antecedents, the pre-image, all pre images are of the same size, okay? So in fact, this is, um, okay, so this is balanced. And the question here is to decide whether F is constant or balanced, okay? And to do this, what you do is that you will run these circuits, which in fact is just 
almost the same circuits as before. So the translation in particular is exactly the same. You will run the circuits and you will look at the probability to obtain k zero at the end. And in fact, what's happened that if you have k zero, uh, you, you will know directly the answer if it's balanced or constant. So we we'll see why, but first we need to find a graphical expression of the properties of F being constant or balanced. So to do this, we have, so this is this. So first, if F is balanced, then this is directly the graphical uh, representation of being balanced. So you can think of it a little bit, but you are balanced if and only if you preserve the uniform superposition, get the plus. And if F is constant, then we can find an X and then F has this form. So first you erase your input and you just output X, okay? So now we can start the computation. So here you see what I'm interested in is the probability of computing K0 at the end. So I will just plug this red dot here, which represents K0. And again, I need to normalize it. So this is why we have some additional black stars. Okay, so the computation is very close to what we have done before because the circuit is similar. So first I will use a Dama gaze to change the color from red to green. Okay, and I fuse all the stars, of course. I'll fuse the green dots and I will also uh, copy the green pi. Again, means well tempered normalization, so those colors. And I end up in this situation, I will erase the green pi using some scalars to normalize. And I end up with this color here with the F inside. And now I will distinguish between the two cases. First, if F is balanced, then I can directly use the property to that it preserves the uniform superposition. And I end up with this color and I know this color is zero. So if F is balanced, I will never see K zero. On the other side, if F is constant, then you can find an X, you know, F has this form. So we replace F by the corresponding diagram. And you can compute that we end up with this color here, and this color has value one. So if f is constant, you will definitely see the k zero as input output. So here I want to do a small remark that, in fact, uh, here we can directly say that this color is one because we are in the extended uh, version of the X calculus to uh, density matrices. So all phases, global phases, disappear. So it is a point I want to make that usually people when computing with um, uh, density matrices, they tend to use doubling to come back to linear maps, usual linear maps. Um, but I think this is like simpler to from the start just working with grounds like this because this is a simpler, you can get rid of some scalars in commutation rules. So this was just a small, a small remark. Okay, so now let's go to our last algorithm, Simon algorithm. And this one is a little bit more subtle. So the idea is you are given a function, okay? And this function, uh, you are unsure that it is S strictly periodic. So you have a vector S like this. And S strictly periodic means that if you, so first mean that your function is, um, is balanced. And if you take an output of F, then you are exactly two antecedents. You have a, an X, any X, and X plus S. Okay, so this is the meaning of being strictly S periodic. And the goal here is to find the period S. And to do this, we will proceed with two steps. So first, the idea is to construct with a quantum algorithm with the circuits here. So the circuits, its goal is to be a random generator that outputs uniformly uh, vectors in S orthogonal. It is, it puts some Y, so just Y scalar S is equal to zero. And the point is that if you manage to find n independent such a y, you have then n independent equation and you can use a classical algorithm to solve the system and then find the s. So the quantum part of the algorithm will just be to show that this quantum circuit is a random generator over s orthogonal. So to do this, so the translation is exactly the same as before, so I will not say more about this. Uh, here, what will be difficult is to express uh, the S strictly periodicity of F graphically. So first, let H be an orthogonal projector on S orthogonal. Okay, so we can find such an H. H and then H is clearly S strictly periodic. Why? Because S is linear and the kernel of S of H is exactly uh, zero and S, okay? 
So by linearity, if you take any output of H, so H will be balanced, in fact, you have exactly two antecedents. You have an X and you have also X plus S, S X plus S. So H is, H is clearly strictly S periodic. And so any F can be written this way. So F, you can factorize it that first you apply H, okay? So then you take care of the S periodicity. And then you just have the bijection G, such that you ensure that the output of X of F will match the output of H, okay? So you can rewrite your F this way. And we will see why this is useful because now we have a red arrow and we have a lot of properties we can use. And we also have a bijective function. And there are also a nice interaction between bijective function arrow and generator of the X calculus. So let's go for the computation. So we start with this circuit. We just replace the F by its expression. So first step, as usual, we just gather all the stars, then we transform the red into green and we fuse the red dots, okay? Next step, we will fuse the green dots and we end up in this situation. But G is a bijection, remember? So the corresponding linear map, in fact, is an isometry, hence it is causal. So we can erase it with the ground. So we end up in this situation. And now we will use again the commutation of red arrows with uh, Hadama gates. So we make the two of them commute. So remember, we need to also change the direction of the red arrow. And we also need to change the transpose of the matrix. But here, uh, H is a matrix of an orthogonal projector. So it, it had to be self-transpose. So we just have H again. Now we see that the Hadama gate is also an isometry. So it is causal. We can erase it with the ground and we end up in this situation here. So here, first you see that this ground like this together with the stars is in fact exactly the um, maximally mixed state. So it is, you can see it as a uniform distribution of all the computational basis. And H is just a balance function and um, the projection of the orthogonal of S. So you know that all the vector you will have at the end of these circuits are in the orthogonal of S. So this is what we want. But furthermore, since we started with a uniform distribution, and H is balanced, we know that the distribution on S orthogonal will also be uniform. So this is exactly what we expected, what we wanted. So that's all for Simon algorithm. So here I presented you three algorithms. In fact, it was, not everything is completely new. For example, for Dutch Joseph algorithm, this was already known if you look at uh, uh, the book, the Dodo book, Picturing Quantum Computing, you will find a presentation of the Josa, which is kind of exactly the same as what we have done. Um, I think what we've done with the Simon algorithm is quite new. And what we have tried to do here is kind of a proof of concept to show that scalable notation can be useful and give a clean presentation. This is not a complete success. So uh, if you look at the paper, we also try to do this with Grover algorithm. And then if there are some nice things we can do, for example, we can use scalable notation to represent uh, iteration doing n times the same thing. Uh, then the proof is not so clean. It's not as uh, clean as a geometric proof, okay? Which is already really nice. It's difficult to better. So there are more work to be done. And the big uh, message I want to, to give in this talk, in fact, the answer is uh, don't hesitate to try yourself. Uh, if you look at this notation, if you have a fa favorite quantum protocol or quantum algorithm, uh, don't hesitate to try to, to do it, to do it with graphical notation. And if graphical notation are not nice enough, enough don't hesitate to invent new one, okay? And uh, at some point, we'll always maybe be able to uh, unite everything. So this is... This, uh, Everything I wanted to say, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And that's all for me.